Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna talk about the exposure, the one plus one of photography. It will be a long video, but this is really the most basic stuff. And to help us with that, I'm gonna use a really special camera, the most advanced technology ever. The uh, Kiev. Don't mock about about this camera, it's a gift but uh, we're gonna use it to explain how exposure works, okay? To understand the basic of photography, you need to understand four things. The first of all, it's the light around you. For example, today it's cloudy and the light is not really strong, so you have to deal with it. You can do other solutions like adding lights or put filters on your camera, but today we won't focus on that, we will focus on the camera itself. In camera you have the lens, the shutter and the sensor. In this case it's film. Well then, first of all, the lens. It's responsible of three things. The zoom, that means the view of angle, as you can see like this. And this field of view, it's represented by a number called millimeters. For example, 50 millimeters, it's really wide and 100 millimeters, it's now already telescopic lens. You have to remember also that this field of view will change also by the size of your sensor. That we're gonna talk about it in a bit. It's also responsible by focusing the image and also by controlling the aperture. So I replaced the film with translucent plastic so I can show you the effect of the lens. Well then, the aperture controls the amount of light that hits your sensor. These numbers, it's represented by a F stop, an F number. So for example, it ranges between F1, F1.4, F2.8, F4, and goes on like this. Each unit, it's one point of light. And highest the number, less light will hit your sensor. But more focus area will be available to you. If you are doing a landscape, you want to have a wide depth of field. The area that is in focus, it's depth of field. If you are doing like a portrait, most of the times you want to have a reduced depth of field. That means that the focus is only on the face of the person. And it has uh, the beautiful blurry background in the back. Let's remove this uh, film here. So usually the, the shutter speed it's two curtains that open and closes one behind the other. And the shutter speed is responsible by starting the photo and finishing the photo. As you can see here, the first curtain opens and then the second curtain closes and you have done here a photo. The shutter speed is calculated by time units, usually in seconds. If I say one second shutter speed, that means that the sh your shutter speed will be open by one second. Okay? But usually when we say 200, it's a 200th of a second. Uh, if you say the shutter speed is 50, it's 50th of a second. That means a 50 shutter speed is 0.02 seconds. Keep that in mind. Well, the shutter speed <laughs> unit is, uh, is calculated by the double itself. That means that the shutter speed of 50 and I want to reduce one point of light, it will be 100. If you want to reduce again one point of light, it will be 200 of a second. And it works the other way around. For example, you are at 1000th of a second. If you want to add one stop of light, you're gonna reduce the number to 500. The shutter speed is responsible by having a sharp movement that you can see in sports or in animal photos or the really smooth cloudy oceans or rivers or waterfalls. That means that the shutter speed is a long shutter speed of even 1 second or even 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Bye bye. <laughs> Bonjour. And at the end of the exposure there is the sensor 
receiving the light. One thing to remember, there is a lot of different sizes. This one, it's medium format. There is full frame and you also have IPSC, uh, Super 8 and camcorders or smartphones have really tiny tiny sensors and the sensor also have a bit of responsibility on the exposure the sensibility of the sensor it's measured by ISO is usually represented like 100 ISO or 200 ISO the units of ISO it's the double of itself to add one stop of light that means that 100 ISO and I want to add one point of light I have to go to 200 ISO but if I am in 200 ISO and I want to go to stop of light I have to go to 400 and then 800 ISO okay well you have to remember if you increase the too much the ISO you're gonna add some noise the sensibility of the sensor works like a volume on a radio so you can really turn up the volume but when you turn really too much the volume you will add noise ISO works also like that well a good exposure is a balance between the aperture the shutter speed and the ISO well then one thing to remember is that the size of the sensor also helps in highest ISO for example uh, if you imagine that the light it's like rain if your sensor size is a bucket you will capture a little bit of amount of water if your sensor is a pool you're gonna capture even more water so the same principle on the sensor sizes it's applied to the noise in your picture but of course the brands during the years develop a better and better high ISO performance so you have to keep that in mind also what I'm going to explain now it's the relationship between the millimeters of the lens and the sensor size because the size of the sensor will change the angle of view of your lens when you are searching for a new lens or a new camera you can see that the zoom range varies like something like uh, 30 millimeters to 200 millimeters for example and usually there is something saying like 35 millimeters equivalent what that means for example if you have a Canon APS-C sensor it has a crop of 1.6 okay that means that your 35 millimeters lens will be around 50 millimeters equivalent okay so one thing to remember about the depth of field is when you are focusing closer to the lens it gets narrower and when you go further from the lens it gets wider for example you can take a picture of a landscape f f22 and compare it with f8 and the sharpness will be about the same and sometimes f8 will be sharper because depending on the build of your lens some f points will be sharper than the others so take some picture tests to check that out one thing to remember about the shutter speed you have to really pay special attention when you go below 60 or 50 because you're gonna add some vibration movement of your hands if you go lower than that number I advise you to use a tripod especially if you are using a telescopic lens immediately you have to use a tripod to use that kind of gear well then this is a really long video but thank you to stick until the end so if you learned something with this video please drop a like if you have any questions please leave it down below if you don't have any questions gonna take a look at the questions down below to help them answer that okay and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this i am miguel until next time see ya